Okay, in this video, we're going to have a look at this little project here. Now, this is my telephone activated switch. Now, if you plug this device into your phone line and call it, you could actually turn on or off a device remotely with your smartphone or a landline. Now, when you turn the device on, this LED here will come on. So instead of an LED, you can replace that with a relay. Now, with all the home automation devices out there and Wi-Fi and Internet, you could also do this with a smartphone. But this is the low-tech way. This is a cheap and simple way of doing it. Now, the way to activate the device on or off, we actually have to send it a coded ring. So if we phone the device and have it ring once and then hang up, then we have a 10-second window to call it again. And if you call it within that 10-second window, it will turn on the device and the LED will come on. And then if you, if you do that the second time, it will actually toggle the device. So you do, that, you do that over again and the device will toggle and it will turn it off. So I'll plug this into a phone line and I'll demonstrate how it works. Okay, I have my circuit powered up with 5 volts. And it's getting that through our Arduino Nano. Also have it plugged into the phone line. So now when I call the circuit, my ring detector circuit, which is the circuitry here, will detect the rings and activate this LED. So every time it rings, this LED will come on. And that signal is fed into the Arduino Nano to monitor the ring signal. So I'll give it a call and we can actually see the ring detector work. So every time the phone rings, LED comes on. Now if I hang up, it shuts it off. Now to turn on the switch, we have to send it a coded ring. So I ring it once, once and only once, and then hang up. And then that will open up a, a 10 second window where I could call it back again to turn on the switch. So I'll send the first ring, so I just ring it once. Hang up. I have 10 seconds to call it back. If I do that within 10 seconds, it turns on the switch. So you can see now the switch is on. So now to turn off the switch, I just do that over again so it actually toggles uh, the switch. So if I call it again, I call it, I ring it once. Hang up. I have 10 seconds to call it back to turn off the load, to turn off the switch. And the switch turns off. Now when you do that, you don't really know if the, if the load is on or off, if the switch is on or off. So the circuit actually sends back acknowledgement tones to indicate if the switch is on or off. Okay, I have a monitor speaker connected to my circuit to monitor the acknowledgement tones sent back to the user when the switch is turned on or off. Now when the switch is turned on, we'll get a tone from a low frequency gliding up to a high frequency, meaning on. And when we turn the switch off, we'll have a tone from going from a high frequency gliding down to a low frequency, indicating the lo load is or the switch is off. So I'll demonstrate that. I'll turn the load on, turn the switch on, and we'll hear the acknowledgement tones. So the switch is on. So that's our acknowledgement tone indicating the switch is on. So now if I call it back to switch the, the switch off, the load off, we'll get an acknowledgement tone going from a high pitch to a low pitch. I'll call it back. Switch is off. And that's the tone indicating the switch is off. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my ring detector. And you can see I'm using an HCPL 3700 opto isolator. And I'm feeding the phone line into pins 1 and 4, that's the AC input of the opto isolator, through a 0.47 microfarad capacitor and a 33k ohm resistor. Now the capacitor is there to block any DC level on the phone line because when you're on hook you have 48 to 52 volts of DC on the line and when you go off hook you get about 6 to 9 volts DC. So that's blocking any DC component from getting into the opto isolator. Now when the phone rings you get a 20 hertz 90 volt RMS ring signal and that will be fed into pins 1 and 4. And inside the opto isolator there's a full wave bridge rectifier and I'll rectify that 20 hertz signal. So on the output you would have a 20 hertz rectified signal, but we want a nice low signal whenever the phone rings. 
So you apply this 10 microfarad capacitor across pins 2 and 3, and that will filter the 20 hertz ring signal, rectified signal, and you'll get a nice clean low signal on pin 6, which, fit in, which is fed into the uh, nano on pin 2 for ring detection. Now the normal cadence ring signal in North America is 2 seconds on and 4 seconds off. And that's going to be detected by the ring detector and fed into the Arduino Nano for ring detection. Okay, I've captured the ring signal. That's the output of the opto-isolator. You can see it's a very clean signal. So when the logic level goes low, you see right here, that's when it's ringing. So it's ringing for two seconds. And this is when it's not ringing. So it's quiet for four seconds. And then it rings for two seconds. Now this signal is fed into the Nano, the Arduino Nano for the ring detection. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer and it's connected to my Arduino Nano. So before I write my full application I like to write chunks of code to test out certain functions. So here I want to test out my ring detector, the code and the hardware. So I wrote a little program called ring question mark and if you look at the top the first line is init that initializes pin 2 to be an input with a pull up. Then I do a carriage return then I go into a begin until loop. Now in this loop, it's monitoring pin 2 for it to go low. So when pin 2 goes low, that means the phone is ringing. Now if pin 2 goes low, it's going to print ring to the screen. Then it's going to go into another begin until loop and wait for pin 2 to go high for the ringing to stop. Then it goes back up to the beginning to detect the next ring. So I'll, I'll run this program. It's called ring question mark. And I'll activate a ring signal. So you see each time we get a ring signal, it's printed on the screen. So I'm, I, I know my code is okay and my hardware is okay. So now I can continue on with my project. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my phone answer circuit and my audio interface. Now the first thing we see is a bridge rectifier, which, which is connected across the phone line. Now we use this so it's not polarity sensitive. So no matter which way we hook it up to the tip and ring, we'll always get a plus voltage on the collector and a minus voltage on the emitter of this transistor. Well, this transistor is what actually answers the phone. So you can see pin 8 of the Arduino Nano is fed into the base of this transistor. This is an MPS-A42 transistor. It's a high voltage transistor. It can actually handle 300 volts on the collector because of the ringing signal it's going gonna, it's gonna to see when the phone rings. Now when pin 8 goes high on the Nano, it'll actually force a voltage across the 150 ohm resistor and that will create current in this current loop. It will actually draw current from the phone line and answer the phone. So basically we're putting this 150 ohm resistor across the phone line which will draw loop current and answer the phone. Now while the phone is answered we can send a tone through this uh, 0.47 microfarad capacitor and a 56k resistor into the base of the transistor and that will modulate the tone into the phone line. So this is from, from pin 10 from Arduino Nano. We actually have our acknowledgement tones, our on tone and off tone, come in here and, and actually modulate uh, the phone line. Now pin 10 is what activates the switch, so when pin 10 goes high, this LED will come on indicating the, the switch is on, and when pin 10 goes low, the LED will go off. So we could substitute this LED for a relay or any other device that you want to put in there to switch your loads. So this circuit plus the ring detector circuit is basically all you need to build a telephone activated switch. Okay, now you know how this circuit basically works. So all we need is a ring detecting circuit and a phone answering circuit which consists of a bridge rectifier and a transistor and our Arduino Nano which counts the rings and generates the tones. Now I've, I've also built this circuit without using a microcontroller. That's it here so it can be done. So there's my ring detecting circuit. I have a 555 timer. I have a 4000 series logic gates to do all the uh, ring counts and generating tones, but this one instead of switching a load actually turns on a an amplifier with a microphone so you can monitor your house while you're on vacation. So that's basically works in the same principle, but the main reason why I made this video so anybody who's learning electronics, who's getting into electronics, could get into some hardware design and some programming on the Arduino Nano.